Hello everyone and welcome to a new movie habitat or shall I say series habitat because today we are building a habitat inspired by the Mandalorian season number two episode number one. I will try to do this without spoilers so for those of you who haven't seen the first episode um, so you can still watch that and don't know really what's going on. I mean everyone knows that Mando is going back to Tatooine and um, yeah I'm not going to talk about too much. Uh, I'm just rebuilding a little um, like a very small village that is a bit outside um, of uh, the main city of Tatooine um, and so it's uh, it's really it's really a build that um, is focusing on delivering the actual uh, yeah um, feeling of, of it and um, this this area is built very close to where the Tuscan Raiders uh, do live uh, on Tatooine uh, I mean there are various locations on there but um, the main inspiration came from I don't know why, but I had this weird moment uh, during watching it uh, that I saw the benthas, these animals that um, used to be held as uh, usable, like very, very usable animals on uh, Tatooine, almost like our cows. Uh, people just also tend to call them space cows. Um, but in fact, they look a lot more like bisons, to be honest, honest rather than cows. And uh, yeah, we're going to build this today and it's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see how you guys like it because that's like very very specific and very different from what I usually do. So I really do hope that you like it and please let me know in the comments down below how you actually like it and what is your favorite part of it. There will be a real-time part at the end um, and at the end of this episode, so don't you worry. And it's all gonna be available in the workshop for you. So there are three different things available at the end of this episode, two different vehicles, if you will. And there will be this whole map as a zoo available for you, so you can actually open it and play it yourself if you want. Uh, but beware, I think you will need all of the uh, DLCs. Um, I think I used pieces from all of the DLCs. I'm not sure whether I used something from the Australian pack, but I'm pretty sure I used something from South America and from the Arctic pack, so that's just like a little uh, note um, at the beginning. But you can see that I used a whole bunch of the African pieces and also the temple pieces from South America. Um, they are just perfect because they, they do look exactly like the stone, um, sandstone pieces that you will find there uh, in or on Tatooine quite a lot. So the building style is very much uh, a lot like that. And I'm, I'm really sure that um, Tatooine is also mostly filmed. And not, you know, now it's filmed in a studio mostly and digitally uh, de designed. But um, back in the days, like in the 70s, 80s, uh, Tatooine was filmed in Tunisia, I guess. Um, mostly in Tunisia. I think also some st stuff was filmed in Algeria as well. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it was definitely Africa. So that makes sense that the buildings kind of are inspired by that. It's a desert planet. Um, so that comes very much in handy as well. And you can see that I'm building like a little bit of a cantina version over here. It's not, you know, it's not one from Mos Eisley. Um, it's definitely one another one out there. It's going to be very small and it's just a little food shop um, that you could potentially also blueprint and use that as a Star Wars inspired blueprint in your zoo if you want. Uh, my idea was also to bring that over to my movie zoo actually because you can clearly tell this is not in the park file. This is in a uh, desert biome just because I found it more fitting and and just in general, it looks really cool. I'm I'm super pleased with how it turned out in the end. And I also cut down this time lapse quite immensely because this has been created and this is now like a very shameless plug in here. 90% um, of all of that has been created during the last week on my Twitch stream. Yes, I've been streaming nearly every single evening and you haven't been there, guys. Where have you been? What's, what's happening? Basically, no one has been there. It was a very small exclusive round of people, which was super cool, um, a, a very interesting very uh, helpful chat so in case you guys want to catch me live doing doing these builds live make sure to go down below in the description there is a link to my live stream channel you can click on it follow there get a notification when i'm live and uh, you can follow the process of building um in not actually uh, 10 times sped up but in actually real time or shall i say 0 0.5 times because in you know i'm, I'm quite chatty with you guys so uh, in that kind of sense, I'm building a lot, lot smaller, uh, smaller, what? Slower, I'm definitely not building smaller, but slower than I would uh, build when I'm just chilling and listening to my music. Um, so in fact, I also did this, I did change the speed of the time lapse. Now all the footage from the stream is uh, kind of sped up by 10 times and everything else that I'm doing like off screen, I, I you know, off screen is kind of weird wording. I'm still doing that on my screen, obviously, but without actually streaming that live is only sped up by eight times because it's uh, a lot faster from my build Building because I'm just this tad bit more focused, obviously. Um, but yeah, now we come to the hero. 
the hero of this show and this is the Mandalorian spaceship because I really thought that this would be a great addition for you to have for me to to have a little challenge because well not a single angle was able to be copied over here because it's all mirrored and it's just like yeah Rudy do whatever you think but well and I think actually like good 30% of the entire building time went into this ship so um I'm really, I'm really sure that this is something I, uh, I'm very proud of, but I'm also very much uh, questioning myself why I always do this to me. Um, so I have really no idea um, why I always come up with these ideas, but um, yeah. So at the end of the day, this is um, a pretty much the Mandalorian Razor Crest ship, as it is called. Um, and it's a, a gunship that is used by our main character, the Mandalorian, in the series. And um, yeah, I mean, um, you can actually tell that this is looking quite similar at the end uh, from the one that is in the series. I've I've looked up a lot of images as a reference and there are quite a few versions of this Razor Crest in there. Um, this specific gunship um, is using two engines and it's equipped with uh, one hyperdrive system and it has two um, laser cannons as a weaponry in and is also able to carry one pilot. Not that much more but this is uh, just very much in um, there and uh, yeah this one belongs to uh, Din Djarin which is obviously our Mandalorian character of the series and yeah I'm, I'm just trying to build this as much uh, in detail as I can even though there are loads of things that I'm really not like 100% happy with but that's also down to the fact that I'm just missing out on a few pieces because hell there is like not really a, a sci-fi set in this game because why would there um, sci-fi is not necessarily the kind of type of things you would need in a zoo game but at this point in time you know I just kind of use this game as a sandbox for anything basically um, rather than only a zoo game so yeah I mean uh, I think uh, this shows again how versatile this game as a sandbox can be on the other hand side, it potentially shows also that we need some more animals, but that's a different story. Now, let's actually continue talking about my inspiration here. So, as you know, I've done, previously, I've done a lot of movie-inspired habitats. So, I've done the Planet of the Apes one, which is still one of my best videos ever, in case you haven't seen that one. I'm going to link a lot of these movie habitats in today's video. So, if you click on this lo uh, lovely, wonderful uh, info button that's sometimes popping up to the top right of your screen, um, you'll see the list down of uh, five different movie habitat uh, builds. Um, so we have another Star Wars one, which is Dagobah, um, Yoda's area basically, uh, Yoda's hut. Then you will have one from Jumanji, which is still one of my favorite uh, movies that was basically also to honor the lovely actor Robin Williams, because I'm a big fan of him. And uh, we've also other ones. I've got the one from uh, The Empress No Groove, which I'm still also loving a lot. Unfortunately, this has been released uh, with a huge mistake on, on my side. I think something wasn't tagged correctly or something wasn't put correctly in so basically no one has seen that video it's just a few thousand uh, clicks away from being not even noticed um, <laughs> which is I think it just kind of ha had the problem that I was I think I forgot to put in which game it was or whatever I don't know but you can find it there I'm still very happy about how that came out and all of these are obviously in the workshop so you can yeah just grab them and enjoy them if you want so this is one of my favorite parts uh, of today's video and this is the engine and yeah the engine turned out to be looking a lot cooler than I was expecting it. It's just really dang cool to see how you can manipulate some pieces to create something so different uh, than what you would actually think from the beginning. So it really looks like a cool thrust engine here um, for the hyperdrive that we need. I am also using some of the glowy pieces here to create a tiny bit of uh, uh, engine uh, engine lighting in there. As you can see, it's like a very much turquoise bluish uh, light, but uh, the emission of it is just tuned down a lot. So it's just like very, very slightly. And then using these ice pieces here um, to get a bit of a bright uh, element in there as if there is like a hyperdrive and whatever, you know, it just... I don't know how it looks from the inside. It's just like me experimenting with some of the pieces, just putting them together to get the right shaping, to get the right uh, details in. Like in general, this build was a lot about testing and trying out the pieces, how they work together, how the textures work together. Because mostly, and this is also maybe one of the biggest issues of this build, is that you really don't have the pieces that... Um, that are meant to be used as a sci-fi set. So you, you really have to find uh, things that go together. And um, since the 
the metal pieces in this game are really limited and also size-wise there's not that much um, of, of small scaled um, iron pieces or uh, metal pieces so you really had to always use the same pieces in a in a more creative way to make sure they're not looking too repetitive and yeah it just always ended up looking a bit weird so you can definitely tell that i'm ending up changing especially this front section here million times so i skipped ahead a lot of time a lot of uh, minutes here to not bother you anymore too much with it and uh yeah it's it's just like i wasn't really too happy with how the sides of this uh, spaceship looked the doors were a cool idea to just get the general shape but it looked a lot too blocky and a lot too uh, disconnected i wouldn't even call it and then i was like, like lose, losing my mind a little bit about that so i was getting in with some more of these wonderful iron uh, pillars poles i think oh wait a second so no you definitely have to have the australian pack as well because that's definitely um from the australian pack and yeah and now we uh, jump a little bit ahead in time again uh, because that is where I started to build the back section of this airship, uh, spaceship airship. What? It's not that much air in the space though, so it's definitely a spaceship. And um, yeah, I just uh, figured that these wonderful metal pieces over here, which usually I tend not to use together with other pieces because even though they have a very cool texture they have this is one of these pieces in planet zoo that has a very weird texture because it's not seamless um in case you don't know what seamless means um a, the texture if you do texturing um normally what you do with the texture is that it is um basically the same to all of the four sides of the texture so in case you are basically connecting two of two pieces of the same kind the texture just goes continuously into the other one which is then called seamless because the the more you put together it doesn't look as if there is like a um a, an interruption in between it basically continuously um kind of displays one texture there are even ways in you know more modern programs use even flexible textures so that they do have different connections going together and like a, it's a bit more randomized and whatnot but mostly what Frontier does is they have wonderful textures that go together very well because they basically seamlessly merge into each other which most of the metal pieces also have they have like a wonderful metal-ish texture and then the sides of it are made in a way that they connect to the other ones however this metal plate you've seen me using quite a bit doesn't really have that and usually this is really annoying because you can't make bigger pieces out of one single piece because then you will always see this little interruption in the middle um, which is kind of annoying uh, but in this specific case um, when you have this spa uh, spaceship it, it looks almost like a bit stitched together out of different metal pieces because when you imagine that especially these ships were a little bit more lower budget um, since they they had to repair it a, a lot more times and stuff like that and almost like the Mandalorian is earning his own armor he's also basically improving his ship the same way like whenever he has some some kind of credit and stuff he's getting some new stuff which is ditched uh, onto the spaceship and then again that makes the spaceship look a bit more glued together out of different pieces and hence this interruption between the textures makes sense in this kind of uh, way um, that I would love to use it here and well that's what I ended up doing I used this uh, in this specific case now you can see me tackling here a lot of um, different elements in order to make this gun look a lot more detailed and this is maybe one of the best parts I've built on this ship because it looks so much not like Planet Zoo. It looks so much like a like an actual sci-fi piece from Star Wars which I gotta have to tell you that this is somewhat cool because when I was building the Among Us coaster in Planet Coaster, I obviously had the sci-fi set at my hands and I really noticed that the sci-fi theme of Among Us, for example, is very similar to like a very generic sci-fi set you want to have. Like, you, you know, there are some basic rules about sci-fi having loads of um, loads of these metal pieces and then have some, some black-ish connectors in between and um, always using indirect brightish light or like, you know, greenish, bluish light into it. Um, so these kind of things. But Star Wars has a different art style of uh, space traveling, space art, whatever you want to call it, because it First of all, it's a little bit older than most of the more modern sci-fi elements. Um, so it's from the you know mid late uh, 70s, which then again um, re you know resulted into a different vision of what sci-fi would look like. And um, hence, I'm very proud that this worked out, and I could nail um, the lovely. And I'm really I'm a big fan of the Star Wars art style in terms of uh, sci-fi because it just is a little bit more. How do you how do I even want to call that brutalist? Um, it kind of, you know, it, it uses a lot more concrete 
over metal. It uses a lot more metal over um, new, basically, uh, polymers and stuff. It, it uses just a lot more of the old school things, which um, are looking very cool. And just, as I said, I, I don't want to call it brutalist, but I don't, it's, it's more likely to be a bit more... Um, carrying the element of, of what Star Wars is with the space fights and you know it's called Star Wars like it's legit called a war and um, so the, the machinery looks a lot more like war machinery versus um, more modern day sci-fi looks a lot more like the vision of what the future could be you know um, and so yeah that's um, that's my little story here I wanted to tell and I'm, I'm really ho uh, hoping that you guys enjoy this little of backstory backside information, background information. God, I'm, I'm losing my words today. I've been reading too much English in the last couple of days because this, uh, this thing in the US, um, I'm not going to tackle in this video. Uh, but yeah, you can see I was doing like a mini Mando here, which um, is just for the sake of putting it in the airplane. And if anyone who hasn't seen this video is downloading this stuff, he'll find this as a little Easter egg in the spaceship even. Um, you can't really tell, you have to really look inside of the windows and then you will find it. And um, yeah, I, I really think that this is a cool idea. And now the last couple of minutes of the time lapse before we jump into the build um, are basically focusing on making this little outpost uh, on Tatooine look a bit more like an outpost. I'm, I'm not really putting down too many buildings. It's just like a toilet. Um, there's a gift shop, there's a food shop, and uh, that's about it, you know. There is some space left in case you guys want to use that and put some... Uh, Keeper huts in as well. The whole map, whoops, I just completely hit my microphone. I'm sorry for that. Um, hasn't been happening in a long time. So that is a typical, it's a typical Rudy video with a typical Rudy microphone hit. That can only be good. It can only be great. This video can only be amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, it is. I really enjoyed the building of it. And for those of you who have been following me the last couple of days, you know that I wanted to do something else again and really just fulfilled the need of something very creative and just freeing my mind from all the constraints of the game and from everything else. I just did what I wanted to do. And this is like a Mandalorian-inspired habitat build, which is mostly done in terms of the time-lapse. So I hope you guys enjoyed the time-lapse. Let me know in the comments down below if you did enjoy the time-lapse and what was your favorite part of it. Uh, before we now jump into the actual uh, real-time part. Um, and yeah, um, make sure that you also uh, have a close look now to the real-time part because it's going to be cool. See you after the cut. There we go guys, here we are in the real time part as promised and here you can see this little outpost on Tatooine uh, as we are, it's raining here, um, very unusual for the desert but actually I thought it would look good, you can, you know, we can just actually turn off the rain and uh, make it cloudy because that still looks very cool indeed, have a bit more sunshine coming down but I just want, you know, I just loved the weather effect as it is, um, you can you can actually also have some more back little, you can, you know, we are just doing it that way, I think it looks cool. Um, now what you can see, this is the little outpost as it is um, in the game, so you can really tell um, it looks kind of cool. And um, yeah, you can see that I used the bisons and the buffaloes as like the banthas. And we also have the art walks in here, which I thought would be a cool addition, but people told me as well to put him in because of the ears, like reminiscing, uh, reminiscent of uh, Baby Yoda, obviously. Um, I would love them to be going in here as like having a little shelter, but this seems to be a little bit too thin, um, so I just left it as it is. Um, which is a bit unfortunate, we can actually just quickly try if we can force someone in here, but I'm quite sure it's not working. No, it's not. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not willing to sacrifice the build uh, by just making that wider. It's like the, you know, the overall, uh, you know, walkable area is not working too much here. So it's, it's a little bit of a pity because they seem still like, I, you know, if I look at the size of them, they should easily be able to get in, but they are not. So that's a pity. Um, I can't even move it like in here. Sometimes it works. Sometimes they just kind of recalculate. We can also try to just push it down a little bit, but yeah, eventually... And this doesn't work because it seems that it's not wide enough, which, yeah, is a little pity, but, I mean, that's not the focus of the build. It would have been, like, a little nice uh, effect, but, yeah. So, you can see, this is the little outpost, and I have a little uh, treat for you guys, and this is this wonderful speeder over here. Look at them speeder. This is so cool, isn't it? I used, um, I was so proud of these, um of these weapons, then I thought, okay, hey, you know, sticking them together in a different way might result in a cool speeder. And so we have this wonderful speeder, which I'm going to upload for you as well. So you do have this speeder that you can use for, I don't really know why you would use it. Um, 
I mean, I don't really know why you would have like a Mandalorian build anyways, but um, in case you like it, you have it. Also, the little thing I wanted to give you a hint on, these are ice pieces, but this kind of created such a cool looking uh, pattern as in, yeah, almost like a glass, fully glass dome, which is then closed off. And, you know, um, as in Star Wars, then sometimes you have this weird, I don't know, technological thing where then the glass becomes translucent. Um, I mean, it, it works in real light as well with the, with the milk glass kind of thing. But still, um, reason why the people are running away is just that I... Oh, let me just quickly show you. If you download the park, you will see that there is a lot of uh, elephant grass below ground just to make sure that the people do walk over here. But at a certain point, I ended to make sure that the animals roam around the spaceship because I just wanted to have it and as soon as these people enter this area they are basically afraid of the animal and then just keep running away um that's something you have to deal with but I think it's fine also I just figured that um these little nubsies just moved for whatever reason out of the <laughs> out of the right position that's a little bit weird I gotta have to put the spaceship back into this exact position why was it even happening me stupida, guys, I'm so sorry, that's that's not that's not good, it has to be in here, yeah, there you go, I just wanted to have like the, these things uh, glowing a little bit as if it's just landed, um, but yeah, so this is already what I wanted to show you in the real time part, maybe we just go inside of the building real quick, because you haven't seen that in total as well, so there you go, this is how it looks inside, very simple, I mean, I did even do the night time in here, so if we just turn it night time, you can see it's kind of indirectly lit, um, I think it's looking cool. It's it's looking like a little um, bar, cantina. And the cool bit is this is an actual um, picnic bench. I, I'm not sure if people would use it. We can just quickly, you know, increase the speed, seeing if they, they use it eventually. I think they don't, but um, yeah. Usually they should because there is like a picnic bench in here. You can plop one in, um, but apparently people seem not to be liking to sit down uh, for whatever reason. No, it's it's just not that thing, okay? These people just don't like to sit. Um, but yeah, so I am, as I said, really happy with how it turns out. You guys can now jump down into the description, download this from the workshop. You can download either the whole map, you know, the whole thing. You can download uh, the speeder bike if you want, or you can download the uh, spaceship, Mando's spaceship if you want. Uh, you can have it all if you, if you, want and then uh, yeah that's that's basically yours i really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of uh, my little bit more creative build here i'm just gonna pause it at this point because i think it does a nice view into the little um hut here or the, the outpost i gotta call it and yeah um if you guys did enjoy as always leave a like um or subscribe to the channel or do both that helps the most and uh, yeah i really hope every single one of you stays very safe at this point in time and i do see you in the next one have a good time and goodbye everyone Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I was really happy to have you here. In case you enjoyed it and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to consider subscribing. You can do it via this button here. And if you want to see more, uh, there's some cool other stuff linked here for you. This is suggested for you personally. That's pretty cool. And in case you want to support the channel a tiny bit more, you can do it via this wonderful Hype Camel link over here. I really would appreciate it. And also, big thank you already to all the people who do already support the channel. Really do appreciate that. But now, have a wonderful time, guys and I catch you in the next one.